people, if you join me now, I'm Clay Sousa, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and you are at 808 with Clay, You're watching this video either on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, where the handle is 808 with Clay. If you like what you see in YouTube, just click the subscribe button, send us, show us some love, because every day you're going to have new content about photography. This is where we go live every Monday and Wednesday at 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time to talk about photography. We talk about the three major pillars of photography, which are lighting, composition, and posing. All right, so 808 with Clay on Instagram at Clay Souza Official. So if you want to join us on Instagram at Clay Souza Official, we are there posting every single day good content about photography to help you to get better with your craft. Okay, so uh, yes, this weekend was crazy, guys. This weekend I was busy, busy, busy. Uh, there's some really cool stories that came out from this weekend that I want to talk to you about. But before I get started, I want to answer some questions that we got throughout the week with me here. Uh, because this is somebody's question, maybe also your question. So, one of the questions that I got this weekend was how to protect my gear when I'm photographing and it starts raining. Uh, when, when my cameras, they are not waterproof. But they are what, what Canon calls weather sealed. So I don't much I don't worry much about cameras and lenses. But I worry about the I worry about the flashes. That's why on every single bag of mine I have a bunch of and it's not you know when I say every single bag I'm talking about my camera bag, I'm talking about my flash bag, I'm talking about my Magmod bag. Whatever bag I have or take with me, I always have like clear plastic bags uh, those are like small trash bags or, or, or you can buy them at Walmart whatever it is uh, uh, very simple to find and I wrap those those uh, 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 bags around the flash to protect them from the rain so it's going to be pretty safe but as long as you wrap them around a plastic bag so doesn't damage your gear our gear is very expensive very sensitive you, we should take good care of our gear all right so plastic bag clear plastic bag just put them in your uh in your bags and have them all the time you don't need to worry about it it's not something that i grab like oh did i bring my bags now i know they are there because i have a bunch of bags in every single bag that i bring in bag inside the bag all right that is number one here check okay now the second question is what is the best hour to photograph there you go um, well, it's always the, the gold hour. It's either sunrise or sunset, right? Those are the best hours to photograph. Where the sun is low on the sky, either either rising or settings uh, or setting, and those are usually the best times to photograph. But this is why I keep saying, and I'll keep saying this every single time. Flash photography is important. Why is it important to photograph with flash? Because you can photograph at any time, in any situation. You bring your own light with you all over, right? I have photographed in air every single situation you can think of. I have photographed in the rain. I have photographed in dark. I mean, I'm a wedding photographer, so I'm always in dark churches, dark venues. Uh, and I have photographed at 1 o'clock in the afternoon at the beach. Uh, just have your flash your equipment your strobes with you all right so for a flash photographer really that's not a question it's a question that concerns uh natural light photography which i mean i get i get it different style different things whatever but uh a flat if you use flash if you if you know how to handle flash in your light what time to photograph should not be an issue you should be able to photograph at any time of the day and come up with beautiful pictures all right so that is that and the third question which is that's a good one that's a really good one this could be actually a whole topic for life it's about uh, 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 I got this question about saying this photographer is saying that he is not confident uh, uh, he always thinks that he's going to mess up something uh, and how how to overcome it this is what we call the imposter syndrome right the imposter syndrome okay and this is, is that thing that 
I'm not good enough to do this. I'm not good enough to do that, right? And that has a huge effect on what we do. Uh, I and I and I think a lot of this has to person has to do with personality, right? So if you some people have a more uh, 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 daring personality, I'm a more of a guy. I mean, I I study, I learn, and I. If I see somebody doing something, if I'm interested in doing that, I'm going to go after it. And I usually think, I usually think, if somebody can do it, I can also do it. Um, but that's just me, right? That's just me. Uh, uh, people are different, and, and some people sometimes they hesitate a little bit um, and overthink. I mean, photographers are kings of overthinking why do we overthink too much i get questions when i'm teaching uh or when i'm mentoring uh it's always like how high i'm going to put the light how to decide i'm going to put the light how much power i'm going to use the light guys we live in a digital world right you take the picture and you look at the camera and you look at the camera if it's too bright you power down if it's too, too dark you power up if there's too much shadows you move the light that's simple like that it's not that complicated we tend to overthink everything that we do so let's not overthink it so the imposter imposter syndrome has a huge effect on photography uh, and in your business actually it, it goes deep down in your business because what what is it? Imposter syndrome is when you start questioning if you are good enough to do a kind of job, right? Am, am I am I an imposter? So I'm not. Am I saying things that I don't know if they are right or not, right? I'm, I, and am I marketing myself in a way that I'm not going to be able to achieve the goals, okay? And why does that happen? That happens because a lot of time we just are not confident enough to do what we what we we are set up to do and this has a huge effect i see that a lot uh, 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 with pricing especially when people when you talk about pricing during my mentoring sessions uh, we I mean, I always say you got to bump your price you get to raise your price you get to raise your prices because what strikes out to me is that most of my mentees they come over here to talk to me because they're not booking and then when i say you need to raise your prices and they go like well if i'm if i raise my price i'm not going to book well you're already not booking so raise your prices and see what happens because go back to that concept that i keep i, I i've said many times here on, on, on previous lives is that the you know the bucket which, which pool are you playing you're playing with a bunch of people the same price range of you like for instance the wedding the wedding um, uh, uh, average price in North Carolina is around twenty three hundred dollars if you play if you, that's your price between two thousand and, and twenty five hundred dollars you playing where everybody's playing most photographers are playing so it's gonna be harder for you you have to separate yourself, right? Um, there's a lot of psychology that goes with pricing because a lot of people... Just ask yourself this question. If a bride has $5,000 to pay for a photographer for her, for, for her wedding, why is she going to hire somebody that's 2500 Just ask yourself this question, okay? If a bride, if a bride has... Can, if, a bride, if, if a couple can afford... A five thousand dollar photographer. Why are they going to hire a twenty five hundred one? Doesn't make sense, right? When you say it like that, so uh, you need to look at your uh, at your at your work and see how much is valuable. Look, you need to look at cost of goods and price accordingly. But when you have that imposter syndrome, you're always going to be. Oh, I'm not good enough to charge four thousand. I'm not good enough to charge uh, 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 three thousand dollars. I'm 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 good enough on the two thousand dollar range well what happens there is going to be harder for you to book because everybody most people are on that price range right so what are the consequences of, of the imposter syndrome so you start uh, a lot of what i see and what i i've seen throughout the years in talking to so many, a lot of people is that we start seeing shifting blame on something else 
all right people will blame oh i don't have time to learn or uh i don't have good gear or um they blame on the weather or the wedding day was horrible was the weather was horrible uh, or a lot of time they blame on the client we have this thing nowadays that people say it's not my client it's not my client you no know, every time some people say i mean i'm not going to say every time but most of the time when people say that i hear a whole lot of different stuff i don't hear like uh, it's my client what I hear is an excuse for not booking, an excuse for not facing the challenge and looking at where you made a mistake and didn't book, right? It's easy just to shift the blame. Oh, it's not, it's not my client. Oh, it's not my client, right? Because you didn't book. No, when you don't book, you need to go back and ask why you didn't book. Where did you go wrong? And I have an example for you. Uh, we shoot a lot of weddings in this mansion called the Bella Colina. The Bella Colina is in Stockdale, North Carolina. It's about one and a half hours from where we live. Um, and we have to do, uh, uh, they vet every photographer to shoot there. Uh, you need to be on the preferred vendor list. You, and they have different, they have a, a very different way of doing business there. So we are one of the top, uh, we are, uh, um, I think it's us and two other photographers only who are on the top package. They, uh, would, uh, if people if people book a, a lower package, if they want to hire me because I'm on the top package, they have to do an upgrade to be able to hire us. So, and the way it works is it's like they the photog the couple picks amongst the photographers inside their packages to interview them for 45 minutes and there are two interviews uh, 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 they can interview two photographers um, so I got picked by one couple to go there and, and, and interview so we drive hour and a half over there have a 45 minute interview and we drive back um, so it's like three hour just driving to a 45 minute interview Okay, so what happens is what happened in this one. So we went there, had a great interview, so we had a great connection with the couple. We left for 45 minutes, we did everything that we do, and we didn't get picked. We totally didn't get picked. She picked somebody else. And it's always my 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 mind boggling a little bit to me because uh I have a re we have a really really good successful rate there. So every time I think we've been shooting there for two years now, and two or three years now, and we I think we 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 were we we lost like two or three weddings only. So every time like high very high percentage do we go there and when we book the wedding, and every time we don't book, I go back and say where did I go wrong? What happened? Where did I go wrong? Because it's my fault if I don't book. It's my fault, right? I don't just go oh it's not my client. No, because it's one hour and a half drive each way. It's a three hour driving. It's a whole afternoon just for that 45 minute interview. Okay, so I go back and say, where did I go wrong? The first thing that I think, where did I go wrong? And then what happens to this particular venue, we have a chance to ask because uh, after the interview everybody, they give feedback to the venue right on each each person they interviewed and i have access to that feedback i always ask the venue hey they tell me hey unfortunately she booked somebody else blah 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 blah. and i always go back why what was the feedback why didn't she book me for this particular case was style i mean she didn't book me because uh she liked the airy and soft style um if she likes the if, if that bride if that couple liked the airy and soft style, my question is why I was even chosen to be interviewed? Why did she choose me? But one of the red flags that I felt right in the beginning because you start talking and I ask her, so I assume, I always say this, I assume you have looked at my website before. And she said, oh no, I didn't look at it. So she brought us over there. I don't know how, I don't know why, and didn't even look at our website. Right, and then I went, I went uh, 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 in competition with somebody who had an airy and light style, and they won her over me, um, which is fine. I'm not bitching. I'm not bitter about it. It's just like I just don't understand how how you you you, you select a photographer to interview, uh, but without seeing the style.
without seeing the website, without knowing what's the style of the person. Okay, so but the que the the point here is is not to talk about why or not. The point is I went back and asked for feedback because I always think it's me. Where did I go wrong? Right? I always think where did I go wrong with the interview that I didn't gain uh, the client over. Right? So there's this whole idea of it's not my client. I think it's an easy way out of not looking at our processes. Because in order to sell, in order to book, you have to have a process, all right? So um, let's stop. Let, let's stop. Let's stop blaming this on the clients, and, and let's let's stop this nonsense of not my client. Yes, I get it. Sometimes people is just not your client, but not most of the time. Most of the time, they are a good fit, and if you don't book, it's something that we did wrong. Okay, we need to look into the process. Where are you making those mistakes? And this goes for booking, this goes for IPS, this goes for everything sales related. All right, so how how do you overcome the, the and I'm going a little bit longer on this question because that's a very important topic. It should, it, it could be a whole live one day, one of those days. How do you overcome uh, uh, imposter syndrome? Um, one of the things you need to be out there shooting more, experimenting more, making more mistakes, learn from your mistakes, always learn from your mistakes. Okay, so it's easy to say, it's cliche, but learn from your mistake and um, practice, practice, and practice, right? And stop, sec stop, stop, stop second guessing yourself, just go for it, just get it and go for it, right? Because this is that's the only way to do it. We just have to jump it. It's like a sink or swim type of situation. You just need to get there and get done. All right. And and I'm going to tie this up with uh, everything that I'm going to talk about because I want to talk about practice. So this weekend, uh, you probably saw some some stories of Danny. Uh, 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 Danny posted some stories on, on our profile. Uh, now Instagram profile of a bridal show that she went to. So, before I go that path, let me go back to style again. Style, right? Everybody, most people know here that I have a, a dramatic style. Although I've been stepping out a little bit more. I mean, it's not stepping out. I'm dialing, dialing the drama a little bit more now. It's a little bit less dramatic than it was in the beginning because when I started, it was very, very much dramatic and we're having a little bit of a hard time booking. Once I start like dialing down a little bit the drama, we start booking more. This past weekend, we shot a wedding on Saturday, on my birthday. We shot a wedding at the C2 Hotel in Durham, North Carolina. If you guys know where it is, uh, it's right in the center of Durham. Um, beautiful place, beautiful hotel. But at the basement, they have a vault, uh, a safe there. And I think this place used to be a bank. Uh, and they want all the pictures done on the safe, in the safe. So you can walk in there and take pictures there, right? And that's what we did. Guys, it was hard. It was very hard because... Uh, we have to shoot moody, you have to shoot very dark because otherwise the light goes all over and wasn't an easy one. Okay, but the couple was really cool. Oh, my computer just shut off here. Okay, couple was really cool and they really wanted the moody. They told me, they told me we want everything moody. We want everything dramatic. That's why you hired me. That they told. That's why you hired you because of your dramatic pictures. That's the importance of having a definite style. You can't not be playing with like where everything, where everybody is. All right. So now, with that in mind, Danny went to the bridal show by herself, and I went to Virginia. Talk about two things at the same time. I went to Virginia to do a photo shoot over there with Brandon and my uh, uh, Brandon, my friend Brandon and Des. This was a style shoot that Brandon had planned and invited me to go. I said, "Let's go." Um, and the bridal show happened to be the same day. Then said, "No, I'll 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 do that myself." Why did I go to Virginia? 
Number one, I need to clear my mind. We've been we've been in on the on the wedding after wedding and photo shoot after after photo shoot and consultations and, and, and IPS for a long time, right? I need to get out and do something else, or something more creative that wasn't under pressure. Remember that I talked to you about a few weeks back. Uh, we talked about um, practice right having goals last week we talked about the plans for 2022 and but i talk about having goals and i i i do what i preach what I, everything i tell you here is from my experience as a photographer as a seven year uh, a photographer now I'm going eight year now um i had one goal this was fashion which i don't shoot a whole lot of fashion at all I have one goal, working on my lighting, working on my refining my lighting. That was my only goal, refining my lighting. Okay, I was I wanted to shoot a dramatic light, edge light, uh, with dramatic shadows, light and shadows, right? Transitions, dramatic hard transitions. I want to refine that because what I find is that as I keep shooting weddings and, and more and more weddings, uh, I'm losing a little bit of the edge of my pictures, okay? Especially on light in the face because of, of, of time sometimes and because of safety and like playing the safe net, I end up not creating enough shadows on the face. So I want to go back to my roots. I want to go back to the dramatic light. That that's what I learned how to do, and that's what I did the whole day. Okay. Now, if I tie all of this conversation up with something else, also, it took me three and a half hours to get there. I left here Sunday at eight o'clock in the morning. Got a rental car and drove three and a half hours over three and a half hours over there. I got there about about twelve thirty. We start shooting at one. We shot from one to around four thirty five and I drove three and a half hours back. So I drove seven hours for a four hour shoot. That looks sounds insane, right? It sounds like come on, you 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 stupid. No I'm not. Because one, it was an awesome location. A mansion with like a lot of really really cool places to shoot number two I was shooting with friends I wanted to see my friends and I want to hang out and do something creative more creative out of what I do every week okay and that is very important this is the creative outlet that we have to do sometimes but why 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 i'm saying all of this so in the meantime i'm gonna go back to this Danny is at the bridal show running the bridal show we're ta talking text i'm seeing how things are okay we finished shooting in virginia and i said okay i'm gonna pack up and get back home because it was getting dark already when when, when I, so i packed up when i'm leaving the venue my my phone rings i look at the number i don't know what it is i i pull over i answer the phone is a bride from the bridal show where Danny was. Danny gave her my phone number. And she was like, hi, is this Clay? I said, yeah, this is Clay. Oh, I'm so-and-so. Uh, I was at the bridal show. I talked to Danny, your wife. Uh, and we look at your pictures. We love what we saw. We're ready to book. Very okay. Cool. So I talked to her for a few more minutes and told her what I was happening. Say, I'm in Virginia right now. I'm inside the car. I can't do anything right now, but I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. She said, that's totally fine. I understand. Uh, but I, let me give, and she go like, let me give you my fiance's number because I'm going to be working tomorrow. Uh, you can call him. He talks to you. I didn't want to talk to fiance. I want to talk to her. Right. And I said, well, in that case, if I can call you later tonight, it's going to be after 9, 9 p.m. Uh, because you have a three-hour drive home. Uh, if I can call you tonight, I said, sure. When, when, whatever time you get home, you call me. So got here, dropped off the, 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 the rental. First thing, I came back, didn't even unload the car. 
came upstairs here and called her book the wedding. Now, why did you book the wedding? And I was talking to Danny, and then said, I remember her. And then I was saying, they, I remember her. They walked in, and there was like photographers, and there's us. And guys, and I, and, and, and I say this not to brag, okay? I'm not I'm really not bragging. If you guys know me personally, I, I, I think I'm a very humble person. Um, and then he said, there was the photographers, and there were us. Everybody has this little table with 8 by 10s 8 by 12 maximum 11 by 14 We had 24 by 36 of everything. Metal prints, big prints, dramatic prints, prints other way. Prints from weddings that we shot at the venue where we are. Where the bridal show was. Okay? That has a very, very... Uh, uh, big impact on who is looking at it. Stani said, I remember when they came in, they looked at her like, whoa, whoa, look at this. Oh my God, oh my God. And start asking questions and we then went on and talking, 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 explaining them everything and we booked the wedding. <clears throat> Hence, this was a free show, small, very small bridal show, free. They don't charge us to go there because we prefer the vendors over there. Right? Now, it's the second year and second year, we always booked over there, okay? So, this is the impact that we have. This is how, <clears throat> why I keep saying you have to find your style. You have to be different from everybody else. And I asked Danny, how about the other photographers who were there? How was the photography? And her answer was, eh, it was, it was good. Good photography, but photography. Meaning, not a whole lot of style there, not, not a unique, different style. It, in style works, having your own, own style works in your favor sometimes and against you sometimes. I've had people who stop at the bridal show, who stop at our booth and they look, look at it and go, eh, no, and just walk out. That's fine. That is not my client. That is not my client. The client who doesn't like my style. Not the client who likes my style came to a consultation and I didn't book the client. That is my client that I missed, that I lost, right? Because I didn't do a good job in a consultation. You can't say that's not your client. Now, the client that likes the airy, soft, that's not my client because I'm never going to shoot that way. Not that we don't know, it's just not who we are. We're not going to look at our photography, you're going to be proud. You need to look at your photography and be proud, okay? So, that, that was one of the things that I want to talk about. The importance of having your own style. And I, and I know I keep saying this over and over and over again. But you need to look at be, being different from everybody else. Because everybody... The moment that you, you start doing different... And guys, listen. It didn't start like that. right? You can't, you can't just think that, oh, it's just going to happen like this. No. It's been seven years. We've been on this thing, on this path for seven years and within seven years we've been changing we've been tweaking we've been reading the market reading what people tell us reading feedbacks right and analyzing why you're not booking okay so and we keep changing we keep tweaking we keep um, making the change that are necessary to please people but still being loyal to what we believe photography should be okay so for next year so last week we talked about planning right and i told you that next year i was going to to cut in half probably in half the number of webs that um that we shot we shoot uh i was looking here i'm switching here my 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 to my uh, uh crm here to see uh uh my plan for next year is to shoot 15 max 20 weddings. 15 max 20 weddings. Damn, I'm already up in 12 weddings for next year. So I was looking at my my dates. April. Uh, let's look at May. May 7th, May 15, May 21st, May 28th, May 29th. Five weddings in May already. So May Probably not going to book anything in May. Then we go two in June, one in July, 
and then you have two in October already. And then I got this email today, two hours ago, of this bride saying, I'm going to read it here quick. I'm not going to read the whole thing, just the important parts. I'm wondering what your availability may be for 2022. I've been following you on Instagram for a while now and love your work. I saw on your story that you were getting booked up for next year, but still had a few dates available. I'm newly engaged and beginning the starting uh, planning process. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I figured... I would reach out to see your availability as I love all your wedding and engagement pictures I've seen through your Instagram, your Instagram page. And amazing photography is a big major in a wedding plans for me. Okay. Um, this came about two hours ago. 4.41. Uh, actually, four hours ago. No. 4.41. Yeah. So, here is again the style. The style. Be loyal. Pick your style. Be loyal to it. It's not going to be nice. It's not going to be fun. It's, I mean, sorry. It's not going to be easy. Some people will, you know, turn their nose the other way. And that's fine. It's okay. You don't have to get... You cannot shoot every single wedding that comes in front of you. You can't. You can't. This year, we're crazy. I mean, we, 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 we are... We've been so busy, it's been crazy. But it's it's a that's why I'm decreasing the number next year because you work way too much. Um, but having your style, you bring these types of emails, right? The type of wedding that we shot this past weekend that the the groom said we want everything dramatic. That's why we hired you because people will hire you for your style, not for how much you charge. Okay. Uh, the couple from the bridal show, the example, the, the story that I told you from the couple, the bridal show. But why does that happen? That happens because you're hustling, you're hustling every single day, right? This Virginia trip, guys, I drove more than I stayed there shooting. But I knew it was going to be epic. I knew it was going to be beautiful. And I knew I was going to be able to practice. One thing that I want to practice, I want to go back to, is my lighting, right? And I keep telling you, practice practice and practice but practice with intention don't practice just for the heck of it just don't go there and, and and shoot you have to practice with intention go there pick one thing that you that that's bothering you in your photography and, and, and practice that until you nail it and then you move to something else but in order to do that you need to be really 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 honest with you look at your photography Look at your competition. Go and honestly, I do this, guy. I go to, to my competition websites and I see what those people are doing. I do that. You need to do that. People say, oh, don't worry about your competition. Eh, eh. I do worry about my competition. That's why it's called a competition. I don't obsess over it. But I sometimes I go there and drop it and I see. I know that people are doing the same thing on my website. Okay? So, look at your competition on Instagram. Look at your your competition website and see what people are doing. See how you can be different. See how can you pro, you can provide a different experience to your client. Okay, so this is the end of 2021. It's been a rough two years for all of us. 2020 sucked. 2021 sucked again. 2022 is the year to make changes, and the time is now. Don't wait for the year to turn. To start making changes the time to make change is now we talked about this last week and I gave you a blueprint last week I gave you a blueprint on what you need to do to be successful next year just follow through pick one thing if you don't have that pick one thing and do one thing for your photography you want to get out of that point where you are just shooting for the heck of it right Maybe that's your goal. Maybe that's your intention. Fine. Because we measure success differently. Success is different from people to people. Success for me is one thing. For you is another thing. For Joe is another thing. And, and, and it changes from people to people. Define what success is for you. What is success for me? What does it mean to be successful? 
incorporate your photography and go for it go for being successful it's not easy it's hard work because if it was easy anybody could do that all right it's hard work but you're gonna work your ass off you're gonna have a disappointment you're gonna try to do IPS you're not gonna sell it happens to me I did one this week I didn't sell actually did like I think three this week one we sold uh, not this week last week right uh, one we didn't sell anything it happens it does happen you just have to do your best and sometimes you look, look back at it and say where did I go wrong and try to fix if anything went wrong sometimes it doesn't sometimes you just don't buy it you just don't see the value on it or they don't have the money to buy it or they don't have the room the house to hang pictures whatever whatever reason it is you're not gonna sell every time but because you don't sell once one time don't think that's the end that's just the beginning that's just the beginning it's time to go back to the drawing board draw redraw everything again and start from scratch again okay guys well I think that's I mean I still have more stuff to talk about but I don't want to keep going on and on because it's already 8 50 it's late um, this becomes a topic for next next talk actually so uh, this week we're gonna be doing today and Wednesday as always and all but next week and next week uh, I should have waited on Saturday on a Sunday I'm flying out of the country okay on vacation but I'm gonna keep feeding content on this on this channel you're gonna see a lot happening in our stories about our trips our travels uh, but I will see you on Wednesday right so I thank you very much for being here I hope you enjoyed the talk tonight um, I want to bring a little bit more you know because I, I think this time of the year is time to inspire it's time to get ready get I mean I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm excited for for next year I'm really really excited for my plan next year because I have a lot of plans uh, and I want to see if I'm going to succeed them or not right and that I think this is the time guys to to, to put the brakes on and, and think about what's going to happen next year do not wait until the year is over for you to start planning that's going to be too late at this point now uh, Valentine's Valentine Day sessions you should be planning for those right remember they gave you a blueprint for that thank you so much for listening to me guys uh, this live will be will be will be available uh, on Instagram and YouTube in a, in a few minutes and I will see you on Wednesday right bye Shh. <laughs>